Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and um, I'm answering now question number seven from the International A Level October 2021 Pure Mathematics P1 exam. And this question here is about radian measure. We're told about this design for a sign at a bird sanctuary. The design consists of a kite, O A B C, joined to a sector of a circle, O C X A, with center O. In the design, tells us that OC and OA are the same, 0 0.6 centimeters. AB and CB are the same, 1.4 meters. Angle OAB and OCB are the same, both two radians. And angle AOC is equal to theta radians, okay, as shown in the figure. And it says, making your method clear, show that theta is equal to 1.64 radians to three significant figures. So we got to find this angle, basically, show that it's 1.64 um, to 3SF, um, given that information. Now, one of the things that we should realize um, in the work that we're doing here is that sometimes they tell us information, and we have to understand some of the properties, for example, here of the special quadrilaterals like kites we have to know the properties of those quadrilaterals so a kite is a special type of quadrilateral and the opposite angles or one pair of opposite angles are the same so they actually gave us that information in this question they told us that this angle here is the same as this angle here they told us these are both two radians so they told us that in the question they also told us that OC and OI are the same, which we should know anyway from two, from two perspectives. One, they're both the radius of the circle, so they must be equal. And two, that they are the adjacent sides of a kite, so they must be equal. So they're equal from two perspectives. But if they had, for example, said the circle of radius 0 0.6 meters, then we should know that, okay, OC and OA are both 0 0.6, but they've actually helped us by telling us that. And they told us that AC and BC are the same. So these are both 1.4 meters. Again, they didn't have to tell us. They could have just told us one of them, and the other one would have been the same. Okay. Um, now, one of the things that we, we need to know here about kites is that the, the, that the line of symmetry of a kite is the long diagonal. So this line that goes between O and B this line is the line of symmetry of the kite. Let me just put it in properly. Okay, that's the line of symmetry of this kite. Okay, it cuts the kite into two congruent triangles, basically. And if that's the line of symmetry, then this angle and this angle, this angle is cut into two equal halves. So this part of the angle is theta over two. So half of the angle theta. So is this one. So if we just focus on this triangle here, and find this angle theta over 2 and then double the answer we would have found the angle theta so the fact that this is a kite we know that this is the line of symmetry this long diagonal cutting this triangle into two congruent triangles and therefore we can find half of the angle we need and then double it so i'm going to draw like just a half of that triangle like this half of that kite sorry like this so one, one of those triangles, I'll draw the top triangle, and then I'll use that to try to find the angle we need. So this is our O, this is C, this is B. This angle is now theta divided by 2. This angle is 2 radians. This side is 1 point, uh, sorry, this side is 1.4 meters, and this side here is 0 0.6 meters. So... I need to find this angle theta over 2, then double it. Now, to find this angle theta over 2, I have a non-right angle triangle. I could use the sine rule, sine theta over 2 divided by 1.4 equals sine 2 divided by, well, I need this length. I'm going to call this length x. I'll say let OB equal x. Let the side OB be x. I need to find this side. If I can find this side, then I can use the sine rule to find this angle. Now, to find this side... I can use the cosine rule because I have this angle. I have the two sides that kind of the angle is 
the included angle for, which is between those two sides. And I want to find the, the, uh, the, uh, the third side of the triangle, the one that I don't know. So I can use the cosine rule. And the cosine rule states that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine a. And the cosine rule is not good enough just to memorize it. In fact, you don't even need to memorize it. It's in the formula book. But what we need to do is be able to apply it in a proper way. Now, to apply this, you have to understand that the length a squared, or a, the length a is opposite the angle a in the formula. So these two must be opposites. So these, this, is, this will be our a, this will be our, our angle a, and then therefore the other two sides are the b and c. So b and c can either be 1.4, 0 0.6, it doesn't matter which one is which, but the a must be the, the side that you're trying to find here, in this case, opposite the angle that you know. All right, so let's now set this up. You've got x squared is equal to b squared, so I'll, I'll use that as 0 0.6, plus 1.4 squared minus 2 times 0 0.6 times 1.4 times the cosine of the angle 2. Now, we have to be careful here that our, our calculator is in radian mode. So here we have the calculator, and we have to make sure it's in radian mode, which it is. If you didn't know, if, you, if it was not in radian mode, if it was in degree mode, you'd go sh to this shift button so you could get to men setup, and then angle unit, and then you can choose one, two, or three. I'm going to choose two to make sure it's in radian mode. So now it's in radian mode, we can now stick this in the calculator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the next one will be x equals. So I'll find the square root of all of this and that will give me my x directly. So I have 0 0.6 squared plus 1.4 squared minus 2 times 0 0.6 times 1.4 times the cosine of the angle 2. Now the calculator knows that this angle is in radians because we put it in radian mode. Right, that's why we have to do that. It knows that this is not degrees. This is radians. So when I press equals now, I've already put the square root. That will give me the value of x, okay, which is 1.73, So x is 1.7375. I'll just leave it like that. Continues on. I didn't round it. I just left it like that. Left a few more numbers. And what I'll do is... Um, I'm going to keep that the answer as it is in the calculator, and then I'm going to set up the answer for the next part because we haven't. We, that's not our answer. That's a step to our answer. Now we need to use the sine rule to find what this angle is. So for the sine rule, we have the sine of an angle divided by the length opposite it, it gives us the same ratio of the sine of another angle in the same triangle divided by the length of the side opposite. That's that that angle. So now we know where x is. We can use the sine rule. We can say that sine of the angle that we're, well, we're looking for, double this angle, we'll, put, we'll leave it as theta over 2 for now, is over the length opposite it, which is 1.4, will be the same ratio <clears throat> as the sine of 2 radians over x, which is now 1.7375. I'll just use a calculator after that. So therefore, I can say that the sine of the angle theta over 2 is equal to 1.4 times the sine of 2 radians over 1.7375. So now we can say theta over 2 is equal to inverse sine of all of this. So I'll take my calculator and I'll press inverse sine. And I'll put my bracket or my fraction and I'll put all of this in there. 1.4 times sine 2. It's already in, in radian mode, so that's fine. Divided by, and I'll just press answer, meaning the last, the very last answer, which was this, okay, which was this, exactly this, in our calculator. Okay, that's what's now going to be calculated, right? So now I just press equals, and it should give me uh, half of the angle I need. So 0 0.8221, 0 0.8221, 2219. It goes on like that. So therefore, theta is twice that. So we can now multiply by that that by two. I'm going to write it vertically. Two times 0 0.82219, which gives us. If you take this and multiply it by two, 1.66439. Six. Sorry, 1.64439. Sorry. 
1.64439 goes on like that now we want to show theta to three significant figures so therefore we can say theta is equal to 1.64 radians okay we can say radians to 3sf as required okay so there's the answer for that question we've shown that it becomes 1.64 radians to three significant figures okay so there's the answer to part a and now i'm going to go on to part b okay part b now part b says find the perimeter of the sign in meters to two significant figures okay so here we have what we know from the diagram um so we've got to find the perimeter of this sign the perimeter is the length of the outline of the sign so it's going to be this arc of this sector, okay? And then the length of AB and BC. So the perimeter is going to be the length of the arc, okay? You can say the major arc, okay, AC, plus, so I'll call this, I'll just mark this as the length of this arc, L, I'll call this L, plus two times 1.4. That will be the perimeter. So we need to find the length of this arc. We need to find L. Now the length of an arc is given by R times the angle, the radius times the angle that makes the arc, which is this angle over here. Now, so the angle over here is like, it's not 1.64, it's 2 pi, which is equivalent to 360 degrees in radians, minus 1.64. That's the angle that we need to find the length of this arc. So it's R times... 2 pi minus 1.64 and r is 0 0.6 so the length of the arc is 0 0.6 times 2 pi minus 1.64 okay so we can say that the perimeter that we need is 0 0.6 times 2 pi minus 1.64 plus 2 times 1.4 and that will give us the perimeter of this shape so let's uh, calculate what this is now what i'm going to do is i already have this angle okay in its more exact form inside the calculator i'm going to store this as a as well in case i need it later so this answer is now stored in the calculator as well what i'm going to use i'm going to use this in its exact form so i'm going to do um, exactly what's written here so i'll have 0 0.6 open the bracket 2 pi minus now i'm going to press answer okay so that answer is the 1.64 in its exact form Close the bracket, plus 2 times 1.4. That is now exactly this written out. So that should be the perimeter of this shape, which is 5.5832. So 5.5832, 5.5832 meters. Now they want this to two significant figures. So that's going to be 5.6 meters. 5.6 meters in the end we must round it to the instructions given otherwise it would be given to 3sf if not mentioned so that's the perimeter of this shape okay and now we got to find the area of this sign in meter squared to two significant figures now the area of this sign is made up of the area of this sector okay so it's the area of the sector the major sector plus the area of the kite the area of the kite Right, to find the area of the kite, now remember this is also two, two radians and two radians. Most probably the easiest way of finding the area of this kite is again to think of it as two triangles, okay, which are congruent. Mm -hmm. So if I find the area of one of those triangles and double it, I find the area of the whole triangle. And it's pretty easy to find the area of one of these triangles because you've got the angle between two sides. So you can use this, the formula area of a triangle is a half a b sine c area equals a half a b sine c this is the area of a triangle when you don't have the vertical height so i can use the, the angle c must be between the two sides a and b and that's exactly what we've got so the area of the kite would be twice the area of one of those triangles so what we can do is the area of the sector is going to be let's keep that visible the area of the sector is basically a half r squared theta okay so it's a half 
times r squared times our theta now is the major sector is going to be 2 pi minus 1.64 again all right plus the area of the kite which is a half times um well it's going to be two times a half i'll write it so that's very clear what we're doing so it's plus two times a half times um you're going to have 0 0.6 times 1.4 times the sine of two radians. That's going to be the area of this whole kite. Okay, so the twos will cancel, and you're left with the area of the kite. So we're adding the area of the sector to the area of the kite, and this will give us, now the R is, as we saw, is 0 0.6. So you have a half times 0 0.6 squared times 2 pi minus 1.64 plus... 0 0.6 times 1.4 times a sine of 2 that will be the area of the whole shape okay so let's work out what this is so we're going to have a half times 0 0.6 squared times 2 pi minus now I'm going to recall the angle A, which is 1.6. That's that's A. That's the angle that we stored. So it's in its exact form. Then I'm going to have plus. I'll have 0 0.6 times 1.4 times the sine of the angle 2 in radians. And that should give us our area. Whoops, what did I do wrong there? Half 0 0.6 squared times the angle plus 0 0.6 times 1.4 times the sine of 2. Mm -hmm. What have I done? One point, ah, I forgot to put the times here, that's all. Yeah, that's better. I forgot to put the multiply here. It's 1.6 times 0 0.6 squared times 2 pi minus the angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that gives us 1.59879, 1.59879, continues on, and they want this to two significant figures again, which is 1.6 meters squared. That's the area of the whole shape. So there we have the answer to part C, and um, that answers the whole of this question. Um, Question seven, other questions about radian measure and trigonometry from P2, P1, sorry, can be found in um, this, video, this, this playlist over here. So radian measure over here, trigonometry questions you'll find over here. Other questions which are related um, to this paper or from this paper, October 2021, P1, you can find in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link here. Thank you for watching and... See you soon.